We can have tea, talk about things that are exciting. You can buy me bling, I wear your ring. You wear my chain, I like your stain. We can have tea. Greetings, dolls and gents. Greetings, dolls and gents, and welcome back to my doll room. We are back at it again with episode two recap thoughts and commentary. This episode was juicy AF. This is what I'm talking about. It was just the, you know, I love me a good relationship conversation or like, I love when they touch on the relationship topics on Back Chat, period. So this question was, sorry, I actually have my notes. I have my, I'm looking at my computer here. I take notes. This is like a lot of work, guys. A relationship shouldn't be on your mind if you don't have money. True or false? So before even going further, whether or not you watch the show, please feel free to drop your comment down below. True or false? What do you think and why? Um, true. Absolutely. If you do not have money, a relationship should not be on your mind. Period. I personally do not think that you should be seeking a relationship. I do find that a lot of girls, most times, it's a top priority for them to have a boyfriend or they're always kind of like screaming. Um, but it's so easy for men to become distractions, especially when you don't have your priorities in check. If you don't have goals, if you're not ambitious, you don't need a man. Because personally, I feel as though if you enter a relationship when you're financially stable, it kind of like equals out the power dynamic. When you enter a relationship and you don't have any money and you're always relying on your man to cover your costs or if he's paying all the bills, all the rent, he gets to be like the captain now. And Look at me, sure. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. Like, I'm, I ain't about that life. I'm not submissive enough to be about that luck. So for me personally, I feel as though if you don't have money, a relationship should not be in mind. If you're someone like me who likes to have their own sense of power and independence. But now I'm gonna reflect on the episode though. I love this episode. I feel like so much more um, character, char personality rather, so much more personality really shown through with some of the characters. I really like Catherine. I think she's gonna be one of my new favorites. Not having money is relative, yeah? So oh, when you think of like really? Drake or like the money that they have and the money we have, they would look at us and think, oh, you don't have money. Yeah, you never need more money. You need to adjust your lifestyle to fit the money you have. Being in a relationship is yeah, not... Yeah, it's smart. Is not, <laughs> is not... No. If you're thinking that, oh, because... Um, it's very interesting, though. The boys are really seeming to take a liking to her much more than any other girl that was on the panel in this episode. Now me and Nina, I'm gonna ask you two, yeah? No, ask Catherine. I want Catherine's point of view because she's gonna be different from the rest of you guys. Me personally, I think she's different. I think you should chill with that. <laughs> Shay even went as far as to say, I wanna hear what Catherine has to say because I feel like she's different than the rest of y'all. A couple of the girls were not impressed by that statement. And I'm gonna keep it, like buck right now when i first heard that statement i was kind of like mm. the colorism jumped out the colorism's really jumping out right now because like when you take a look at that panel what's the one thing that was kind of the most different about Captain was the fact that she was a mixed slash light-skinned girl but then in the diary session shay did expand on that and thank goodness the producers asked him to see Catherine, i know she got something different to say because she didn't grow up in the hood like us most of us in the class, we grew up in the hood and I feel like her, her mindset might be different. It might actually give me some different, different source, man. Something different. Change it up. I feel like she's too repetitive right now. And what he meant by that was more so the fact that she didn't grow up in the ends. She didn't grow up in the hood like a majority of the cast. So he is a little bit more intrigued, I guess, to hear her perspective on certain things. But 
we'll see because uh quickly yeah we'll just period we'll see and i it, i think that because of the way the men are taking a liking to Catherine, it is gonna cause some sort of like superior or inferior complex between the women. That they like a certain lifestyle. I personally don't really, not like I don't like going on dates, but I would much prefer to stay at home and chill. That's just me. That's just me. Like, I don't understand. So when I speak, I'm trash, but when she speaks, no, 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 no. Wait, I don't no. It's just, it's just. Because you can already see that a little bit of tension brewing there between Yasmin and Catherine when she was like, how come when I talk, I'm trash, but when Catherine talks, she's a wifey. So I'll leave it at that for now. Let's just stay tuned and we're going to continue to see how that dynamic kind of plays out. In this episode, Yasmin and Lanny were getting a lot, a lot, a lot of flack from the male cast. And the thing, their perspective really isn't that outrageous. It's one, it, their perspective in a nutshell is what our culture or the pop culture now will deem the city girls lifestyle. They were really kind of getting at um, Lanny and Yasmin, they literally refer to Yasmin as belonging to the streets. Yasmin, <laughs> I'm sorry to break it to you, but you belong to the streets. <laughs> That's just it. <laughs> my take on Yasmin, I don't even, my take on Yasmin is personally, I do kind of see where the men's perspective is coming on about her. Um, I kind of think that she's using this platform right now to advertise herself. How? Hmm. I don't want to be too controversial in just my second recap. So I'm not going to speak too much. I'm going to watch a couple more episodes and I'm going to loop back with my thoughts on that. But I do think she's kind of like advertising herself, period. I think she kind of does want the inquiries. I think she does want people to be flooding up her DMs with offers and collaborations. And hey, no shame in the game. I'm just giving a recap and my first impressions of what I'm getting, okay? So moving right along, I freaking live for Lani. I stand her. I didn't mention her last in my last recap when I was saying my favorites because I didn't know. But right now, I love her. She says everything with her chest. That is an insult, first of all. That is an insult. You know when people say, what do you bring to the table? Sweetie, I am the table. Women are the table. That's the point. The generation we live in is fucked because back in the day, men used to court women. Men used to chase for women and prove themselves to women. But now we have to prove ourselves to men. It's bullshit. Everyone needs to correct the way they think, especially you, Castillo. No, I'm not proving myself to no one. I'm the table. I'm the table. What are you bringing to my table? I'm the prize, not you, sweetie. She's clearly very jaded. And hey, I'm sure we all know a Nigerian fellow or two who has left us feeling pretty damn jaded. Period. <laughs> period and when she gave a little shout out to all the young girls and she's like i want to say a message blah blah, blah to all the young girls do not let love make you stupid is basically what she said you know when you're in love Probably. your, your brain doesn't yeah. your, it's actually yeah. science it's a scientific fact your brain don't work the same when yeah. you're in love yeah. it don't matter that's not your business when a woman's in love she would do anything for a guy men can take advantage of vulnerable women when a woman's in love she doesn't think straight she doesn't make um, sane decisions. And that's why I think women should protect themselves. There are men here finessing women. They're getting yards off women. They're getting cars off women. And women do that because they're in love. A man might present himself a certain way, but when the woman falls in love, she don't care. She's not going to leave him because he's broke. That's why women need to be smart. Don't date these broke niggas. You'll ruin your life. They will ruin your life. Trust me. I'm talking facts. I literally, like, I must tip my, uh, my invisibility. <laughs> I was gonna say I want to tip my hat off to her. I guess I'll tug my unit to her because honestly, she's speaking fucking facts. When you're in love, one's heart becomes so vulnerable, and that's why I think love's such a scary thing. Like back in the day, I used to think that love was such a beautiful thing, and like I was such a hopeless romantic. I was like a Disney girl to the fullest. As I grew older and more wise and uh, experienced life. I do see love being as a very, love is a dangerous thing, man, because once you're in it, your vision can be so easily clouded and your judgment can be so easily clouded 
and you can make reckless decisions in the act of love. So that's why what Lonnie is basically trying to say, it is so important to be smart before you fall that deep, for you to set standards for yourself before you fall that deep. Because when you fall that deep, yeah, and you fall that deep with a waste man, yeah, you're done out here. You're basically fucking done out here. Like he has your heart in his palm, and if he squeezes it and says, oh yeah, babe, hold this thing for me. Oh yeah, babe, my credit's fucked up. Can you take out your name? Oh yeah, babe, like you're just going, oh. <laughs> like with every fucking request, you know it's jeopardizing your livelihood in a sense, but in the act of love, you want to be that ride or die chick. Don't go being a ride or die chick. I don't know. Personally, I'm not in the position to, to preach, okay? I... I have my fair share of fuckboy stories to share, and I will, guys. Stay tuned. But, yeah, I just want to say shout out to fucking Lanny. I'm loving her personality so far. Say with your chest, princess, and, yeah. Love is blind. I got taken advantage of by my ex, and listen, I trusted him with all my heart. I, that, that's the one, that's the one that I tattooed and that's, and that's an experience that will shape you? Thank you. Okay, let me ask you this here. Why is that an excuse like, oh, my ex did this and I loved them, did it. Why is that an excuse that because he was this way and because you was all caught up, caught up and all that stuff, yeah? He made you do that and it's his fault, yeah? It's your business, like... It's yours! You know what, yeah? We're undermining the fact, here yeah, that love is very deep. Knowing that Castillo and I think DC were pretty rude to her when Lonnie decided to share with the cast that she... what She shared an example of what she felt was a time she was dumb in love herself. And when she had an ex that made her tattoo his name on her vagina. Now they were quick to jump out and say, oh, well, he he didn't take you there and lay you on the, on the tattoo table and make you do it. You're the dumb one, you're the dumb one, you're stupid, you're stupid. And I thought it was so mature of Lucas, the way he hopped in and said, hey, everybody loves differently. To go back to this point, sorry, yeah, you said she's stupid and this is what I was getting at. She's far from. Why? She loves differently. She's maternal. Women love very differently, yeah? yeah? Just... And that's what probably has shaped how harsh she sees Mandem now. Because maybe at the beginning of her process, she was that willy-nilly, I love you babes, yes, everything, potential, but the guy now fucked her over. What do you think? The next brother, she's going to do the same thing. Course, then course, now, course. then you're an absolute dickhead. So we live in a society where you've seen mums go for it, aunties go for it, girls are actually going for it. Yeah. And they're like, you know what? Fuck this shit. City girls. But the flips. You know, it's, it's a little harsh for you to be like, oh, you're dumb. Like, and I totally wholeheartedly agree with that. Everybody's love language is very, 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 very different. I don't know. I just thought that was cool of Lucas. And on topic of Lucas, welcome back, OG alpha male. Let's go. As much as like, I have a love-hate relationship with Lucas because he's just such a typical African man. He really holds those like, ugh, that mentality, okay? It's just, it can be quite frustrating, but I must say he's just quite the charming alpha male fuck boy. <laughs> no, but honestly, I really like his demeanor this season. It seems as though the personality, I'm predicting it now, he's gonna be like the old man, the Reformed, wise road man is what I think he's gonna take on this season. He didn't come with that beep, 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 beep energy as he so commonly does in other seasons. He was very respectful. He actually played a big part in helping to steer the conversation and like help the new cast learn to not shout over each other and kind of like stop insulting, but take a minute, pause, listen, digest, and think before reacting. So that was mad dope. So things got, things took a turn for like the worst when Yasmin and Lani said out loud that they did not plan on settling down, getting married, and they wanted to have children and bring children into this world without being in a um, exclusive relationship. And the males went wild. They were like, what, what? Well, watch it yourself. Wait, wait, you just, you opened your mouth, your, to, your uh, you open your mouth to say... Stop calling me stupid! Stop calling me stupid! You are about to say you stupid, open your mouth. You are about wait, to say stupid. You open your mouth to say, I don't want to settle down for my children. Are you mad? Yes. Yes. You if she's the one children, I tell her say a Wait, wait, you've got a point there. You've got a point there. I'm going to sperm bank. Is that your business? Sperm bank. So, wait, oh. bank. so you're going to go into this world. With that said, um, at first I was kind of like, okay, everyone needs to chill. Like... Who's to say that a woman can't raise... Women raise kids on their own every day, B. 
every day. But Lucas talks some facts. Like, it's not easy. It is not fucking easy. And it really does add to the problem or of like just of kids growing up without father figures, man. Like we can dwell into that, but I think the effects are obvious. It does have effects, period. And there are definitely negative effects of it. No matter how hard the mom tries um, to upbring the child, there are effects. And bringing it back to what they were talking about, like, you know, growing up fatherless, one can consider that, consider that a trauma, okay? It could lead to things like poverty, or it could add to those things. Poverty, um, lack of mentorship guidance, lack of emotional support, just a whole bunch of things. And yeah, you know, you want to be on your high horse and bring this child into the world without a father. And to tell, like, it's this interesting one, because honestly, I intend to adopt a child one day. Like, I don't know about the whole marriage thing for myself. I do not know, I'll just say that. But I always said my whole life that I would love to adopt a 13 year old. So do I have to now really say, oh, like, the only way I'll ever experience a child, the love from a child is if and when I find the suitable partner. What if I never find a suitable partner? So I see what Lani was saying with that. She wants to have a child, period. And I don't think her finding love in life should determine that because it's, it's hot out here in these streets. <laughs> um, but at the same time, she needs to be healed. Lonnie does. She's definitely very jaded. And it's a shame that she comes across as a bitter because she seems like a sweetheart. And I can totally relate to that. Sometimes I'll be on my fuckboy tantrums and I'll be just speaking that real real. And people are like, oh my God, like who hurt you? Who hurt you? And it's just so exhausting. It's like, yeah, people did hurt me, but whatever. These are the lessons I've learned and this is what I'm preaching. So it just it is what it is. Um, I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about this episode. It was so good, so juicy. I think how I want to close this recap is um, me and my sister actually watched the episode together and one of the castmates said, okay, so if men who don't have money shouldn't be looking for relationships, should women who have no money be looking for relationships? I personally said no, period, because like I mentioned in the beginning of this video, if you're in a relationship with no money and not having like not being financially stable you lose power and not to say that relationship should be about power but every relationship is about power dynamics period it plays such a big part so to me the answer is no you should not sis get your coins up period but my sister said yes she's like yes a girl with no money can uh seek love or relationship because a girl can seek to use a relationship to advance her current economic status is what she said so i'm gonna leave it at that i'm not gonna speak on her behalf because she could really like lay it down and i'll definitely bring her with me on one of these episodes we were supposed to come together but shit went down if you like what you've seen today or heard please don't forget to like and share this video with your friends let's get this conversation started um also don't forget to subscribe to me so you can get a notification each and every Wednesday when I post. And as always, stay hustling.